Well, good Friday morning, everybody. This is Brady with West Louisiana Bee Farm, and uh, <laughs> I told you I was going to do a follow-up video. I didn't know it was going to be this quick on the second uh, time that I tried to stock this uh, Sam Comfort hive with bees, and uh, let me just show you what happened. So I come out here yesterday, uh, late in the evening, and I'm I'm actually doing some other work around the uh, the bee yard, and I noticed that there was a lot of bees going in and out of this box, which there shouldn't have been as many going in and out as what there was. So I decided I was going to take a peek inside, brought my smoker down here, and uh, I dismantled the box. Now, it, first of all, let me let me just remind you, if you remember correctly, I took bees and a queen from this box dumped them in here and then i took this queen excluder i actually had two boxes stacked up at the time i put the queen excluder between the two and put the queen above the queen excluder and there was no way for her to get out so i thought apparently uh she quickly got out and came over here so I actually took that box apart yesterday, opened it up, and I found that there were two queen cups that had been started, but they, they didn't have anything in them. And kind of made me uh, figure that I, I never did see her in the box. Uh, I never could find her. But it looked like every one of the bees had come back over here. And um, anyway, <laughs> I'm, I'm assuming she's back in that box. So I'm going to open it up again later on today. But... Here's what we're going to do. We're going to make a third attempt at this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you from beginning to end. And you're probably already having doubts if I even know what the heck I'm doing. But, you know, it is what it is. But I'm going to take you from the beginning of the process of making the Sam Comfort box. I'm going to do this all on one video today. I'm going to make a, a, a small box like the one you just saw and show you how to put it together it's real simple uh i'm going to do things a little bit differently when i put the bees in this time but i'll walk you through the entire process of getting it built getting it seated with the uh, new bees and then we'll do a follow-up on another video again in the next week or two so uh come on let's go okay we're uh back down here where i do all of my building <laughs> if you want to call it that but uh, I got back down here to my sawhorses, and I forgot that I had a job that I had not quite completed the uh, day before yesterday. I've, I've been real busy coming in and out, so uh, I just wanted to show you this real quick. These are my top bars for my Kenyan top bar hive that I was working on a couple of days ago. And I want to show you that it's really nothing fancy. I mean, you've got a, this is a, just a piece of wood for the top bar. And I put it on my table saw, and I lower it down over the blade, kind of in the center as much as I can. Uh, put a little dab of glue, tight bond wood glue, non-toxic type. <clears throat> and uh, then I just put a little tiny foundation strip in there. And it's not real technical work. I mean, there's no real science to it. <laughs> show you and you don't even need a whole lot of wax foundation in there either to make it work all they need is a line to go by and that kind of gets them started uh i used to do the um the wedges i would make wedges they're a little bit more difficult to make and they really don't improve the comb on the bars anymore i think you have a bigger a better working area for the bees by using just the flat surface here with a uh, starter strip so anyway uh, that's that and now we're going to get back to making the uh, the Sam Comfort boxes and on with the project okay so a couple of things before I get started number one these are about all the tools that you're going to need uh, you don't have to have two drills I, I just happen to have two drills uh, a cheap skill saw and a very cheap table saw 
uh, actually all you need is one skill saw or even a hand saw will do and uh, a drill or you know a screwdriver even uh, but that that's pretty much it there this is really low tech kind of stuff um, and if you'll notice over here I have on top of that B box I have different size screws I think one box is two and a half inch the other box is two inch and uh, <clears throat> The, then the lumber that I'm using, now I, I need you to listen up. This is the lumber that I'm going to be using. Okay? It is unplaned sawmill wood. It is actually one inch. Uh, I have different size, different dimension wood in there that I bought really, really, really cheap from a, a sawmill. And uh, I would recommend doing that, but you're probably going to get something more like a three quarter inch board. And it's going to be plain and a lot prettier than this one. I'm not looking for pretty. I'm looking for practical. So I'm going to, what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and cut my boards that I'm going to be using. I only need four. I don't have to have a whole bunch of wood to get this thing going. And then I'll come back and uh, show you what we're going to do with the board. One more thing. I just want to make this as easy as possible for those that may have never done any kind of woodworking. Uh... I'm going to try to simplify this a little bit. What I'm doing on this first board is I'm measuring down 11 inches from the end. Okay? 11 inches. And I made my mark. Now what you want to, you want to have a uh, tri-square or a speed square, whatever you want to call it. And you want to put it right almost on that mark okay take your pen and yeah I'm trying to do this one-handed take your pen and then you want to make a line all the way down the length of the square across the board okay Viola there you go that's the line that you're gonna cut okay I'll be back in a few minutes. Okay, here's the uh, boards that I cut out. And along this end, see how the boards are to the inside? All right, the end boards, those are 13 inches. Now, these are my dimensions because I've got wood that you're not necessarily going to pick up at Lowe's or Home Depot or your local lumber, lumber yard. This one also is 13 inches. The outside dimensions are not what matters. Okay, the inside dimensions are what matters. It needs to be 11 by 11. It needs to be square, 11 by 11. And honestly, and we'll do this at a different time, you can actually make it longer. You can make a longer box, like a long laying straw. You can do a long Sam Comfort Hive. We're going to do that later on this year too. Um, but here's, here's what you want. You want 11 inches, roughly. Okay, let's see. By the time I screw it together and pull it up tight, it'll probably be right at 11 inches. And this one, of course, it's got a little room to go. But you want 11 inches. Okay, now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a cradle on the short boards for my skewers. Okay, and then I'll cut down my skewers to fit between the boards but let me uh let me show you this real quick you want a specific kind of skewer i get these from amazon you want jumbo bamboo skewers you don't want anything else anything smaller is going to be too small so you want the 12 inch jumbo skewers i'll, I'll share the link with you so you can know how to uh order them from amazon all right i'll be back all right, this is what your uh, skewer wrist is going to look like when you get it done. And what I do is I cut mine at about three-eighths of an inch by three-eighths of an inch. I'll show you how to set that up on your saw real quick if you have a table saw. But I'm also going to show you a different way of doing it using a chisel and a hammer if that's all you've got. Now, I'm just going to explain it to you. I'm not going to actually do it for you. But uh, what you do on your saw, let me get my tape measure out. 
is you want three eighths. It's kind of hard to tell with the tape measure sometimes, but to the inside of the blade. I'm sorry. To the outside of the blade, you want three eighths of an inch to your fence. Okay. I don't know if this is going to pick up, but at the very center of your blade here, you want three eighths of an inch from the bottom to the top of the the, the uppermost tooth. All right. Uh, now, as far as using the chisel goes, what you will do is you're going to mark you an L-shaped line, just like this L-shape here, 3 8 sorry, having a hard time seeing my screen, getting a glare on it, 3 8 by 3 8 okay, and you will draw those lines all the way down your board, on the top and along the, the edge, alright, and then all you do is you take your chisel and you hit, tap it with a hammer all the way down and then that piece comes out that's that's really kind of oversimplifying the whole thing but you'll get it figured out as you go we're not doing we're not building rockets here okay and I forgot to mention grab you a once you get your saw set up and you can even do this with the chisel but make sure that you practice a couple of times just with a scrap piece of wood to make sure that you've got this right because you want this to be nice and smooth on the inside let me show you another one I practiced on <clears throat> and I did it a little bit too big uh, it actually ended up being a half inch because I didn't measure right this one is nice and smooth but if you'll notice this one is not and that's going to cause you problems moving your uh, your skewers around. So I'm going to go ahead and cut my pieces and I'll show you the finished product. Perfect. Okay, next thing you want to keep in mind is you don't want a very deep board or you don't want a very deep box. Um, depending on, and, and the reason is they're going to be making these combs on these little bitty skewers, okay? So they're not going to have a lot of suspension support. This right here is what they're going to hang the comb off of. So in a, a hotter climate, in a more humid and hotter climate, like here in Louisiana, uh, you want them no more than about six inches across here. Uh, that's the depth of your, your box. So I'm going to cut all these down to about six inches. And look, if you're down in South Florida looking at this, and you know it may even be hotter down there than, than, and more humidity than what we have here in West Central Louisiana, you may want to bring them down to about five and a half inches. Because when you pull those skewers out of the box, you don't want your honeycomb to turn loose. Right? Right. So we're going to set the saw up. <clears throat> for six inches and again we're not building rocket ships so it's it's not a it's not an exact science okay uh, y'all look it rained here last night and everything's kind of wet I had my saw covered but apparently uh, the wind was blowing pretty good so I'm putting it on six inches I'm gonna lock it down and I need to raise this up a little bit raise my blade make sure that I've got ample clearance bring it up a little bit I'm gonna click on my saw
I'm going to do the other two and then I'll be right back to show you how, how it's assembled. Okay, I've got two inch screws. These are T25. Uh, I don't know if I can get my T25 star screw heads. Okay, they're two inches. I've got one inch board, so I figure two inches uh, is probably going to be plenty to go through and, and make the attachment. Now, normally, I would only put one screw right here in the center on each corner. Okay? On each corner. That's how I normally build these. But, because I've had an escapist queen, I'm going to make sure this one is secure. So I'm going to put two screws in each corner to attach the boards. I'm going to do that. I'll be right back. We'll do the skewers next. Okay, so here's the semi-finished product. Uh, it's screwed together. And you want to you wanna kind of check it to make sure that it's square, or at least this one's not quite square. Even though it's short boards, it can get out of square pretty pretty easily. So try to get it pretty close anyway, because once once you go to stacking these up, um, you want it to look you want it to look decent anyway. But uh, so let's let's talk about the skewers now. What I do, and this is what Sam Comfort recommends, and I, I guess anybody would. Um, you want to cut the the tips of these off so that they'll fit down in the cradle. These are the cutters that I use, and these are the, the most practical ones because you can actually put the skewer in the box. And let's see if I can get a close-up of this. You can, you can put your cutters on it, put it right up against the wall, and I know it's blurry. Let's see. There we go. Clip. And bada boom, baby, fits perfectly in the box. And look, when you're out working your bees, you can carry these around in your tool belt if you carry a tool belt with you. And as you're pulling the, the skewers out to process the honey, you can do a couple of things. You can either just go ahead and cut the honey off in a bucket, or you can have a, another pocket full of these with you and just just make these as you go when you're when you're pulling your honey out of your boxes. Okay, now what I do is I do an inch and a half between each one. And I'll just do that with a tape measure. And when I start a box like I'm starting, I will put a dab of glue at each place just to let it set up and, and hold in place. Now you can get this at Lowe's or at Home Depot. Uh, I have found that I can buy it just as cheap on Amazon. And I, I live way out in the country, so I don't like to make a trip to town just for some Type Bond 2 premium wood glue. So I'm going to add a link to it if you're in the same situation as me. That way you can get the, the non-toxic. Not all of these are non-toxic. This one is non-toxic, okay? And it's, it's some of the best glue that you can get. See right there? It says non-toxic. Can you see it? Anyway, trust me, if you can't see it, it says non-toxic. So, uh, I'm going to put this together real quick. And that's pretty much it for this part of the video. I'm not going to... Well, one more thing. I'm going to put a one-inch hole here at the bottom. And then I'm going to put a one-inch hole here at the top. This one will be screened. Okay? Once I put the queen in, and I'll explain this again later, once I put the queen in and the bees, this will be screened for a few days. I'm not going to allow them to get out. Uh, that's not the end of this part of the video. There's some other things that I'm going to show you about the top and the bottom uh, when I come back. Okay, correction. I made a mistake. It happens occasionally. Uh, I told you one and a half for the skewer spacing. It's not one and a half. It's one and a quarter. And here's kind of how it's going to end up. You're going to start, uh, you lay your tape measure across here. You're going to measure to one and a quarter, two and a half, three and three quarters. You're just adding an inch and a quarter every time. Five inches, six and a quarter, seven and a half, eight and three quarters, ten. And you're going to have an inch right here at the end. It's okay. It's not a big deal. 
So I just wanted to make that correction. Make sure you space them out right because you're going to have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight skewers in here. I'm going to go ahead and get them laid out and glued down. I'll be back. So here's how we do our skewers. One in there. Make sure it's up against the back part. Real simple. So easy somebody like me could do this. And unless you're a commercial pollinator, someone who moves hives around a lot and, and needs to have frames this beats building frames all day long now you take your glue make sure what now what I've done I don't know if I, I don't remember if I showed you this or not oops I got one more I've got marks I did show you this but I'm gonna tell you again I've got marks down both ends <clears throat> of where my skewers go hey you, you don't have to do that uh, I guess I'm just a little OCD I like I like it being exactly an inch and a quarter not a not a smidgen more or a smidgen less and then I just put a drop of glue now you don't have to put the glue okay I do this just so I don't have to fight with them rolling around. Uh, and you only have to do it really the first time if you feel like you have to do it at all. Uh, you, only, you only need to do it one time because once you get bees established in here, they're pretty much gonna make, make it all real sticky anyway. And you're not gonna have to worry about your skewers rolling around on top of the box when you don't want them to. So this is just a one-time deal for me. And I do this on each box that I build. Okay. Uh, you can, I'm just going to finish this up. You can fast forward the video if you want to, or you can watch my smiling face while I glue these down. Okay. Um, we'll mention this if you're still here. Don't put anything like your Reflectex tile on top of this box until the glue has set up okay just a little FYI okay now the next thing I'm gonna do I'm not gonna show you this everybody pretty much knows how to paint so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some boiled linseed oil and that's what I coat the outside of my boxes with I may put a couple of coats on there and then later on this afternoon uh, We'll put the rest of this box together, and we're going to put some bees in it, okay? Don't forget, I'm going to drill my holes. I'm not going to show you that either. Um, it'll just be a second for you, but I'll see you later. Bye. Okay, so while we're waiting on the uh, the Comfort Hive, to the glue on it to set up, and for the uh, linseed oil to, to dry, uh, I'm going to show you how to make a hive top feeder for a Comfort Hive using a mason jar. So let me show you the things we're going to need. You will need a mason jar with the lid and the ring. You're going to need a razor blade or a knife will do or scissors even. And they will be used to cut this 3 sixteenths, let's see, 3 sixteenths hose. Okay. That's going to go into the top of the lid. You will need a drill bit. Where is my drill bit? I just had my drill bit. Oh, there it is. It's in my drill. This is a 3 16 uh, multi-purpose bit. Uh, you can actually use just a regular old drill bit. And you're also going to need... I'll give you the link for all this stuff. 
This is a uh, food grade silicone. And I use food grade because it's actually going to be coming into contact with the sugar water. Don't want to kill my bees. So uh, I'll show you real quick how to do this. It's, it's really simple. First you want to drill your hole. doesn't have to be in the center. You don't want to use a whole lot of pressure because you really don't want to bend your lid. And as you start to get through the lid, you may want to slow down. Okay, I'm going to have to use both hands, so I will have to stop this for a second. Okay, got my hole. And this should fit. That's actually kind of loose. But that's okay. We're going to seal it off. That's why I got the silicone. And we're going to be going through a ceramic tile for the comfort hive. And that's what I've got here on top of this table. Uh, what you want to make sure you do is you're also going to have Reflectex under the tile. So you need enough to go through the Reflectex, through the tile, and into the jar. So I'm probably going to cut off, I'm going to say about an inch with my razor blade. And then we're going to silicone it to the top of this. Now, uh, keep in mind, as you're going into the jar, you don't want to go too far because whatever you have sticking in the jar, that's how much sugar water is not going to be taken. Um, so, I mean, not that it's a big deal, but, you know, just remember, you don't want to be sticking it this far into the jar because that's how much sugar water they're not going to be able to get to. So I'm going to cut off about an inch, and then I'm probably going to put about an eighth to a quarter of an inch inside the jar, and then I'm going to silicone it up. So let's see if I can hold my camera while I cut off an inch of this stuff. It's going to be difficult. So right about there and please forgive me I'm not a videographer and I don't have a camera person I'll be right back <laughs> okay so I got it cut maybe a little bit more than an inch uh, I've got my silicone tip cut I don't know if you can't see that. There. See? Now I'm going to put a little silicone up here. I'm taking a minute to get down to the hole. Okay, and I'm going to kind of fill the hole up a little bit. Just to make sure I've got a good coating on the... Uh, on this now after it sets up I'm gonna have to clean off probably a little bit of that just to make sure that there's a hole in it and I'm gonna come back around this one more time I'm gonna try to go all the way around it with the silicone make sure I've got a really good seal on there and you'll want to do this too. Just make sure you've got, um, make sure you have the whole thing sealed off. Because if it's not, air is going to leak in there, and all your sugar is just going to pour out in a few hours. So, and we're going to have to give this a couple hours to set up. All right, be back in a second. Okay, so now you see it. This is an inside view of the of the lid. Uh, you'll see that. There is caulk or silicone inside the hole or the hose, the line, <laughs> the nipple, whatever you want to call it. And we're going to have to let that, uh, we don't have to let it set up. I could clean it off now, but I'm going to let it set up on there. But I want to show you this. We're going to have to silicone around the inside of this too. And we can go ahead and do that. What I did is I made a little stand so that what's sticking out of the bottom here doesn't get up against the table so I'm just going to set it there 
and I'm going to silicone around the inside okay now you want to make sure that you go all the way around make sure this thing is sealed off really good you, like I said you don't want air getting in and it's it's a longer process when I'm sitting here explaining it you can do this in about a minute if you're not having to hold a camera and everything so I'm gonna go ahead and shut it off and get this part done be back in a minute I want to explain a couple of things some problems that I've run into this uh, you see where the silicone is I tried to do this with Gorilla Glue at one point and of course the Gorilla Glue it expands and it gets all bubbly on the inside and it, it just makes it grow so this is going to actually be sitting flat on your ceramic tile. If you have a big buildup of silicone here, guess what? It's not going to go flat. So on the outside, it's mostly just for kind of holding it in place. You really want to build it up on the inside to actually seal it off. And also, the top of the jar is a good place to work. You don't have to have the extra caps. I didn't think about this a while ago. But also, you probably want to do a bunch of these at one time. You don't want to do just one or two unless that's all you really need. Uh, you can get a lot of these knocked out at one time if you're doing a lot of Comfort Hive boxes. And I think our box is getting pretty close to being ready. I, I still need to wait a little while before I actually uh, go out there and do the bee thing. But I'm going to show you the top and the bottom with the Reflectex and the tile. And I'm going to show you also how to drill a hole in the tile so that you can put your feeder in it. Alright, stay tuned. Well, after I got the hole drilled, I realized that I did not have my camera going. So I'm not going to drill another one, but this is ceramic tile. And I started with just a regular titanium drill bit to get my my uh, hole started uh, I didn't drill very long with it just just enough to get a notch in the in the tile and then I finished it off with this one um, as you can see it goes all the way through but when you're drilling through ceramic you saw the water kind of come up when I when I pulled that out you're going to want a spray bottle or some kind of application of water or even some drilling oil to uh, spray the hole spray the hole while you're drilling to keep your bit from wearing out getting too hot so anyway uh, under the tile you're going to have some reflectex and you are actually I had this glued down my bad but you're going to have a hole through here too Big enough that when you put this on the hive, you can see through and see your hole down there and get them lined up. Uh, because that is where this is going to go through. Just like so. I'm not going to do it because the silicone's not quite dried up yet. Alright, this is the hive that I'm going to uh, be taking the bees from. i got my little queen catcher. I got some wax in the end of it because I'm not going to put the whole queen catcher in there. I'm just going to release her inside. Got my hive tool. Now, I want to tell you a little bit about this hive. This colony, anyway. Um, I caught this colony in a swarm trap right here on the property on July the 4th of 2019. And they haven't been really, really strong. They haven't built up really, really well. So, I feel like if I can start this particular uh, comfort hive... <clears throat> and you see I put the honeycomb in there and uh, if I can start this comfort hive with or if I if I don't actually accomplish what I'm trying to accomplish and I lose this swarm haven't really lost a whole lot the queen's not that great if they do build up if they do make a good colony in this particular box over here uh, then I may requeen and, and go from there or I, you know we'll just see how she does but anyway I'm gonna get in here I'm gonna find the queen I'm gonna put her in the uh, in the queen cage and then we'll we'll start over from there in a second see you in a second okay you'll see that I've got the queen in this queen cage I had a little trouble getting her I dropped her my bad 
Hope everything's cool with her though. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start shaking bees off of these frames into this hive. And then after I get that done, I'm going to seal it up and I'll come back and I'll show you what's going on. Actually, I think I'm going to try to shoot it for you. See if y'all can get some of this. Alright, I'll smoke these bees down pretty good. And here comes the fun stuff. I'll do this, this one first. It's got a lot of nurse bees on it. See the bees? See the bees? Here we go. Now the workers, they're going to fly back to the original hive. I got to do this kind of quick so that the nurses don't walk back to the hive before I get this thing closed up really good. I need to get a good mess of them in there. not a real strong hive to begin with so we'll see how there's practically nothing on here but we'll give them to them anyway all right I'm gonna put this back together real quick now I'm gonna put the lid on here of them in there as I possibly can. Alright, now I'm going to try to get, well I need to flip that. Line up this hole with that hole. Perfectly. Now, I am going to take the queen. Sure, she's away from the hole because she will slip out of there quickly. I'll flip this down and then I'm gonna just let her walk in there. Once she walks in, I'm locking it down. Give her a little puff. Okay, she's in there. Yeah. 
I'm gonna make doggone sure that there ain't no place for her to wiggle out of. <laughs> now I'm out of I'm out of staples. Okay, so there might be a gap right there. I haven't seen any bees go in and out of it. Uh, that's just because the box is kind of unlevel. Uh, going around a little bit. Make sure I don't see anything else. They have to do some fill-in on that. Just understand that you you got to check these out and make sure that everything is level and square. Now, I didn't do that when I was making this one. So that may be actually how she got out of the last one. Is that it wasn't perfectly level. I'm still watching that corner there. I'm not seeing anything go in or out. They're trying to squeeze in there, but nothing's happening. So I'm probably going to take some honeycomb and just smash it up in there. Uh, that way I've got a, a good seal on it. Nothing's nothing's happening that shouldn't be happening. So let me let me grab this water, the sugar water. Show you how that goes on. I know you know, but I just want to make sure this is a good and detailed video for everybody. So you got the little nipple on there. All right, you can check it out. Make sure it's going to stop dripping. And it will once it gets enough tension on the top. And you don't want to force it. There you go. There we go. All right, and it's going to leak a little bit to begin with. And because I sprinkled some sugar water on the roof. Yeah, you're probably going to get some bees coming and visiting. But it's okay. They can't get in here, obviously. Alright. Well, that is how you build and seed or, or um, propagate. Do a split, whatever you want to call it, into a brand new comfort hive. Now, mark it down. I'm going to come back. I ain't opening this box for a week. I don't think there's any way anybody can get in or out of it. So I'm not doing anything with it for a week. And then I'm going to come back. By then, they should have some comb built. I'll be changing the water out regularly if it needs it. Uh, there wasn't a whole lot of bees in there. But there were enough to get her started. There was a cup of bees in there. So that'll get everything kind of going. And then in a week, I'm going to open it up. And we're going to see what's what. Okay? So I'll do another update. Fingers crossed. This one doesn't fail. Hey, if this video is helpful, and you really won't know if it's helpful or not until we know that the bees are going to stay, but if you find this video helpful, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And if you could, share it with other people. I'd, I'd really appreciate that. So trying to make life easier for you. Uh, that's what we're doing here at West Louisiana Bee Farm. I'm Brady. Thanks for watching. Love you guys. Bye.